Hello, everyone. I see we have a few folks joining us still, but we're going to get started shortly. In fact, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and start us off. Uh, so hi, my name is Anna Olson. I'm Interim Executive Director at CTRL. And it's my pleasure to welcome all of you, whether you're with us on Zoom or in person in MGC, to our first Artificial Intelligence in Teaching workshop this fall. And it's titled AI, Your Teaching Assistant and Creative Partner. And uh, we are coming to learn that AI is a topic that has many facets. Uh, and we've intentionally created a space where faculty and staff can come together to discuss and ask questions, learn from each other, broaden our perspectives and brainstorm strategies as we move into what for many of us is unchartered territory. Uh, so in addition to these hands-on workshops like the one we're doing today, we also have scheduled a series of informal, in-person and virtual coffee chats, and we hope to see you as the, uh, at those as well. But for now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Christina Domian, who is CTRL's inaugural Artificial Intelligence and Instruction Faculty Fellow, and who will lead today's work workshop. Welcome, Christina. Hi, everyone, and thank you for coming. Um, there are a lot of people in the room, so Zoom room and live, <laughs> live room. So I, I assume everyone is really interested in, um, you know, finding out what to do with AI and how to bring it to the classroom and then what to do, one, what to do once it's there. Um, what I'm going to do is, um, well, first of all, let me just, drop my slides in the chat box if you give me a moment so if you're okay and i hope that i opened it in a way that it's um it's viewable um so i'm sharing my slides right now because um depending on how you're accessing the meeting, um, perhaps as you sort of follow me along, you can click on, uh, or you should be able to click on some of the hyperlinks and some of the information that I present on these slides. So I think it will make more sense if you have access to it as I speak. And just one more. All right, here we go. All right, so I think all the steps are <laughs> completed. Um, let me just skip the uh, the learning outcomes. Um, you all have seen it as you sign up for this workshop. Um, the way I designed this workshop is uh, I'm going to tell you my story, and um, I heard that once you tell your story to other teachers and they can see that it's doable, maybe they think that they can do it too. So that, that's the philosophy um, here. Um, and so let me start um, with November 2022 when the news came out. And unfortunately, the headlines made uh, generative AI like ChatGPT seem extremely scary. And the emphasis was on cheating and how it's going to destroy everyone and how students can um, destroy their teachers <laughs> by cheating with it. So that, that's what you saw um, if you looked at the headlines. And so um, my colleague and friend, uh, we were on the phone all the time for days in and out and, and for weeks. And we still talk a lot about, okay, what do we do? Or how, how do we even, you know, where do we even begin? Um, so we were just as worried. Now, since, um, since then, I learned that there's actually an AI um, operated news tool. Uh, this is an app that you can download. It's called Boring Report. So when something, a piece of information comes out and it sounds like that it might be a little bit um, sensationalized, you can just listen to the news through the boring report and they will give you the gist of the news without all the sort of clickbait worthy sentences. And so, you know, sometimes AI can actually be really, really cool. And I think that now if we wanted to look back at those articles, um, 
those, the content of the articles would be very, very different through the boring report. Um, so what I did, I, of course I panicked like everybody else, I'm not going to lie. But then um, I remember that one of my favorite psychologists, and of course call me biased, but he's also Hungarian. His name is Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, Mihai, and he's the one who came up with the idea of the flow. And I just thought, well, maybe I should go with the flow and just do what he recommended. And of course, uh, this mental framework um, is based on, as you can see it on the slide, curiosity, careful observation, recording your observations, um, teasing out underlying concepts, humility to learn from others, skepticism, and openness of mind. So I thought maybe I should just, like I said, go with this flow. And so I, I am still curious. I still want to know more. I, I am open uh, to learn from my colleagues. I have been attending workshops. I read um, probably two, three articles a day about what people are doing and uh, if there's an update, if there's something new. And I do observe what my students do and I record my observations so that I can um, draw conclusions about what to do or what not to do. Um, now, of course, uh, there are a lot of generative AI-based tools. And I think that in the near future, um, and I've seen this already, that people are moving away from um, the abbreviation AI and they just uh, use the one that's uh, GAI, as in generative AI, uh, when they refer to AI power tools. Um, before we heard about ChatGPT, there have been AI language models out um, already, like Grammarly, WordTune, and Quillbot. But before um, they could use the power of uh, either ChatGPT or you know, generative AI, they were sort of more basic. They did assist with writing, but right now they are at such a level that it's, it's almost like you're using ChatGPT as you're using Grammarly, WordTune, and Quillbot. And the reason why I'm emphasizing this is because I've heard from a lot of my colleagues that, you know, I'm still worried about ChatGPT. I don't really want my students to use it. I just don't know how to do it. But I tell them that it's okay to use Fullbot or Grammarly. And um, the reality is that Grammarly and Fullbot and WordTune are all just like ChatGPT. They don't just correct your spelling and your, your typos and your grammar. They do so much more. Um, and I definitely want to show you what they can do. So I want to sort of, you know, take a quick pause here and um, and see if you could um, follow me around. So, um, oh, yes, you can keep everything out of that box just so no, that we sorry. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> um, right, so these tools can do can help with paraphrasing, uh, grammar checking, uh, but they can actually do a lot of co-writing, which is the scary part. Or I don't know if it's scary, I think it's exciting. <laughs> Um, so they can really help enhance your, your writing. What you see here on this slide, I took snippets of these tools. So the, the purple one here is, um, is the one from WordTune. And I, I wrote one sentence as digital participants, it is important to consider this option. And so um, my students and I were paraphrasing um, this sentence, we were practicing paraphrasing in my um, in my language class, and we wanted to see the difference between real paraphrasing or sort of semi plagiarizing, and so we used WordTune. Um, but as we're using it, of course, you know the students can see easily what I can see that there's so much more that you can do with the tool. So besides just rewriting, paraphrasing, you can change the tone. Um, if you want to shorten the sentence, you can. If you want to add more and expand it, you can. It does that for you. And there's another option here on the side. It's called um, the spices. And you can just click on continue writing and it's going to continue write. 
and um, or you write a sentence and you click on explain and it's going to give a two, three sentence long explanation. So if you return your student's essay and you say, well, you didn't explain this, <laughs> or you didn't write the definition, they can just go, oh yeah, <laughs> working can help me out right there. So it is, um, like I said, if you tell the student, oh, it's still okay to use Grammarly, blah, blah, blah. Well, you might want to think about what these tools can really, really do because they just, they can go beyond the simple, you know, syntax level um, issues. Um, and yeah, so, you know, give an example at the conclusion. Um, I guess it's not on the slide, but it also says, uh, make a joke. So uh, we tried this with the students. I said, you know, uh, we were practicing um, writing emails, you know, correspondence, official correspondence. And I said, well, you know, write an email, but make it, you know, lighthearted. You want to ask for an excuse or an extension on assignment, but, you know, try not to sound so serious. And then they, they used to make a joke. And those, those were always funny, like really lighthearted. And, but I knew it didn't come from <laughs> the students. Um, however, it, you know, did the job. And um, this line here is from Quillbot. And again, Quillbot used to be just a simple paraphrasing tool. It can go beyond that as well. It can continue writing for students, just like WordTune. So it, used, it uses generative AI. And Grammarly received this major uh, update in the summer. And Grammarly does the same thing. It can improve one's writing just like that. Um, as you can see here, you know, improve it, make it persuasive. And if you click on more, then there are a lot more options. However, the, the cool thing about Grammarly, and if you want to encourage your students to continue using Grammarly, then that's fine. But you might want to ask them to click on this, and it says Acknowledge Grammarly Gen um, Generative AI Use. And what it does is once the student is done, let's say, with the paragraph or the essay or whatever they have to write, a report, a memo, um, they can click on it, and it's going to um, insert a list of how Grammarly was used. So everybody's honest about what Grammarly um, has done and what kind of improvements it made. So that's, you know, that's something that you can do. Uh, the other two tools don't have that option, or at least I, I couldn't find anything like that, but at least Grammarly is transparent like that. I would say for now, I can only uh, imagine that um, within a few months, they'd probably just take that down and think, well, you know, <laughs> if the kids are using it, then they're using it. Um, so I want to take a quick um, pause here, and what I can do, what I would like to do is I'm going to give you a paragraph that you can copy from the chat box, and, and I would like you to go ahead and um, try to use either Grammarly or WordTune or Quillbot to experiment with the tool itself. And I would like you to, to tell me what you what you notice or you know any feedback that you can um, give me about the tool. Okay, so I'm looking for the can you hover over the green you are sharing your screen. Oh, oh then it will come up. Okay. <laughs> Quick it go. Again? Are you looking for the oh, the test, yeah. Hmm. All right, so feel free to um, to use that paragraph. And um, what you can do is <clears throat> I will show you what it looks like. So this is Quillbot. Um, 
And I can just click on paraphrase. So this is the paraphraser. And the really good thing about this is um, the students can set how much paraphrasing they want. And as you can see, there's a bar and then you can just move the dots depending on um, <clears throat> what you want. Um, the students can click on words and see if there are other synonyms that they prefer to use instead of the one that the machine recommends. So this is the paraphraser. Um, so the co-writer is the one that is um, similar to said GPT. And the students can simply add the paragraph just like I'm doing it. And so this is when they can start adding sentences. So this is when um, it can help them with that. And if they, and you can see this bar right here, if they want to um, find information, if they want to find research, um, you know, scientific evidence, and they can use that as well. So there's 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 a lot that it will do for um, for the students. So I clicked on one sentence. So you can see it yourself. Um, we can just move beyond the fact that it can help complete the paragraph. <laughs> but uh, just like Word Tune, add an example, add counterexample, offer new viewpoint. So there's there's a lot that um, that the tool can do. Um, If you're looking for more information, you click on suggest text, and then it does just that. Um, these these tools can can do just as much as ChatGPT, if not more. And I would say that if students want to have a partner to co-write their papers, their essays, then these these tools are much um, much better than ChatGPT, but I've seen um, some syllabus um, uh, briefs, and uh, and often you know, teachers still say that it's okay to use um, tools like like these. And and I would say back in maybe even the spring last year, it would have still been somewhat safe, <laughs> but now they are um, powered by generative AI, so now it's it's a little bit different. Um, yeah, and so you can do the same thing with Grammarly or Grammarly Go. And of course, you know, it still does the, the traditional uh, suggestions that Grammarly has always done. But like I said, it goes way beyond that now. So I don't know what to suggest. <laughs> I guess um, my recommendation is that if you want students to, or if you want to allow students to use um, a writing assistant, um, just ask them for the disclaimer. And, or you can simply say that I would like you to use Grammarly. And then whenever you create uh, something, you write a paragraph, you write a memo, you write a, a report, something, just add the disclaimer, acknowledge grammar reviews. And so that's, um, that is something that you can do. Um, do you have any questions? Are we 
doing questions audibly or simply by chat? It's, it's up to you. Okay. Uh, this is fascinating. Love the visuals. Very helpful. I had not heard of Quillbot. What do you see, just you're talking about Grammarly, Christina, what, what is it new that they're doing? Because I'm, I'm used to the basics of Grammarly. So the new thing is what you see here. Let me just um, use the full screen version. So the new thing about Grammarly is that it can continue writing for students just like Quillbot and Wordtune. It can improve their sentences, make the sentences longer, make them more formal, more academic, uh, or more casual. Um, so it it's essentially can write for them. And um, and as I said it before, this is the cool thing about uh, Grammarly that you can ask students to click on this button, the one that says Acknowledge Grammarly Gen uh, AI Use, and then it's going to give the students and essentially you a list of how the students use Grammarly. Um, and of course, there are a lot of counter arguments. You can say, well, what if a student uses, you know, um, another Google Chrome account and then complete the work there, but then they copy it over and they act like they generally only did a little. True, I mean, at this point, you know, we can just have a very honest conversation with the students that it's an honor system. And, um, and depending on what you want to do with the assignment, what the learning objectives are, um, you can allow a certain level of assistance do you want to? Yeah. I, I missed the uh, start. So, do you permit this in all your classes, or encourage it even use of these AI different versions of AI sites? Um, yes, and I will show you in a few minutes. I will show you some examples of what I tell students Thank or you. how I. Yeah. I, I do allow. You're welcome. I, I allow them to um, to use these tools. Um, I think because it is sort of the beginning of this new era, I haven't seen students um, abusing the system that much. Um, plus, I mean, you know, my students are, you know, 18 and, I don't know, 20-something, uh, you know, the oldest. So they're not too... You know, they're not too old. Um, I guess they're not too savvy when it comes to you know, rigging the system. So, so far it's it's been good, but just having the conversation and showing them the options, um, you know, can help. And so we have a question. In My question is, I've never personally used this. Are they good? Like it's producing good material that you wouldn't yeah. be able to help. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they are pretty good. No, you wouldn't be able to read and be like, ooh, you're crazy, or like, you know, stuff like that. No, they are much better than ChatGPT. Yes, when it comes to it, yes. However, and this is something that I tell my students as well, that, um, you know, you have to do some, you know, some writing. So if you do blank paper and then you just give it a sentence or two, it's not going to be able to work with you because you're not giving it enough information. If you have a solid paragraph, no matter how weak the language is, no matter how um, weak your argument is, it can help you strengthen all that, but you have to have something. But yeah, the sentences are pretty good. Like I said, I for um, for syntax, you know, and and great sentences, better argument. I think these three tools are much much better than than ChatGPT. Yes, we have another question in the room. I'm just wondering, kind of speaking. <laughs> um, I'm wondering, are there any um, tools that staff and faculty can use to detect that AI is being used? in a particular document, like Winston AI or those types of things where it does like a scan or something to that effect, you know? Visually. 
controls that claim that they do uh, detection, yeah. but they are yeah. not. No, no. Then does have an AI indicator now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, but it doesn't do. We don't know how it generates it. I have found it to be. Well, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it's uh, so so at least you know I, I when I have something like it doesn't sound right and and like it's just too fluffy or too general. Mm -hmm. And I teach grad students, so they have to be very specific in their analyses, etc. I, I often find <laughs> it correlates. Now that doesn't mean that they use AI, but it, it, it sort of sounds like it. Yeah, maybe their brain works like AI. Mm -hmm. Right. So when it comes to Chat GPT, not necessarily these tools, but Chat GPT is very formulaic, and the way it provides information, and um, and I would say that if um, if if you were taught in K through 12, or if you're you know if you use a certain formula, then you know you're always going to start your paragraph in a certain way, finish it in a certain way, and so sometimes these detectors. Think that you're AI because you're you're writing it formulaic, and so that's you know that's um, yeah. There's a few questions in the chat. If you don't mind, um, or I can read a few out. Um, do will that and Grammarly work in languages other than English? That's a great question. Um. Yes, and when I pulled up. Sorry. So when I pulled up, okay, how do I exit? <laughs> I have to move a few things around here. Um, so this is Squillbot. And when you look at the paraphraser, I think it even shows different languages, yes. I don't know about Wordtune or Grammarly. But Quillbot, yeah, it can use different languages. And ChatGPT also speaks multiple languages brilliantly, much, much better than Google Translate or any of those softwares. Very natural, very natural. Um, and yeah, so just naturally moving on to <laughs> moving on to the next slide uh, of you know what can go wrong when using these tools or recommending these tools and, and a lot of things can go wrong. Uh, students abusing them. Um, and my recommendation again, ask for a disclaimer. Um, just acknowledge and talk about it in in your class you know, spending, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes and say, guys, I know that these tools are out there. I know that, um, you know, you feel like that they, they can be your crutches. They, you know, they can, they can help you. They can uh, boost your writing, but I just want you to be honest about how much help um, these tools have given you. Um, and perhaps even say, in an assignment that in order to complete this assignment, you may use these tools to, and then, you know, blank, uh, correct your grammar, um, typos, spelling, punctuation. So say what the tools can actually do for the student. And then be explicit about what it can't or it shouldn't. And then ask students to, um, you know, just to be honest about it, and and um, and say at the end of the assignment that this is what I used it for. So that's that's something that um, that you can do. Um, just take a look at the chat.
And Christina, is that Canva you have up on? Yes. Oh, and That's... by the way, Canva is another AI powered tool, not at your end. Yes, yes. So I've been letting my students in PR writing and other classes for years most amazing shortcut for a student that hadn't studied graphic design. So I'm just sort of having a little bit of an eye-opening moment that again, here are these things we've been using and why is it okay or exciting sometimes, but less okay in other times? Because Canva has been a boon for students to design all sorts of graphics and visuals, just a boon. Um, yes, and so Canva, as you, I just clicked on the slide, um, so I can click on Magic Write, and so even if you, if the students want to design slides or presentations, infographics, um, posters, whatever you might ask them to to produce, it has that magic button as well. And just like the other tools, it can continue writing, rewrite. Um, the sprinkle fairy dust is horrible. Don't try that one. It's really weird. <laughs> but everything else is really nice. Um, and what Canva can do, um, it can, let me just show you this. So some of the images are only if you pay for the upgraded version. And I always tell students not to pay for the upgraded version unless they just want to spend money. Um, but you can you can create your own images, and I've I've tried to use Dolly, which is another AI power tool to create images. I found Dolly to be very difficult, and this one is very easy. So you you can literally tell it what to generate, and it's going to create the images. So most of the images that I use here on the slides are AI, AI powered. Like this one, when I'm talking to my friends, we're looking at the laptops and on the phone that I created those images. I mean, I'm not saying that they are the best, but I thought that they were pretty quick. I just, you know, typed in three sentences to describe the scene. And then within 30 seconds, I had a, I had a nice image. And however, if you want students to show how creative they are, that they can actually create their own images as opposed to just steal something from Google Images <laughs> without um, citing uh, the, the sources, this is, this is a nice way to replace um, what they want. If you want students to put presentation slides together, you can actually encourage them, you know, don't, don't take photos from wherever. Even though you show them the stockpile, they're going to go on Google Images because the stockpile might not have everything they're looking for um, or they need. Uh, this is one way for them to, to show um, that they are creative, that they can, you know, they can use AI for, um, for good purposes. Uh, and also, if they have information on the slide, um, what and I think that that's how some of these AI generators work. That you can add information on a slide and then just copy and paste and generate an image based on that information. So it reflects what you're talking about. Yes. So you can do a pie chart too. Second. I'm sure you can do a pie chart too. With oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so let me just come back to to the slides here. Um, all right, so what I wanted to say is during the um, the presentation or when I talk to you or as you experiment with these tools, let me know if you have any concerns and any or any discoveries. And I, I, I saw one question in the chatbot about if you want to install Grammarly, uh, it asks you to um, to access whatever information on your laptop, which is I think true for all tools. They they want to have some of your data um, depending on how comfortable you are with giving it access to um, whatever data it harvests. 
it's, you know, it's your choice what you what you want to do. I believe that you can add Grammarly, Quillbot, and even WordTune to Microsoft Word as well. Uh, I use them as Google Chrome extensions. I can also use them in their independent websites as well, uh, or Chrome extensions, but Microsoft Word um, uses or can use them as well or embed them. I don't know what kind of access they are asking if you're adding them to Microsoft Word. So I don't know if that's more limited or safer. I think essentially these tools are all gathering some, some information. Uh, and this is something that I tell the students. If you're comfortable, because I always show them that there's the, do you allow me to access blah, 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 and I tell them it's your choice. Um, and one other thing is when I take time and talk about these tools with the students, we always look at the terms of use. So I know most of the time people just scroll, 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 or drink. <laughs> But with these ones, I think it's worth just taking the time and, and look at how um, or what they say, partially because some of these tools say that users have to be 18 or above. And I think some of our freshman students um, might not be 18 just yet. So that's when you kind of need a permission from a parent uh, or a, um, a legal guardian. Or I think in some cases say that it's okay if the educator says yes. <laughs> So they try to go around and just, just come on. <laughs> um, and so it, it's good to, to be aware of that. It's also good to be aware of how whatever information they produce and they type in these tools might be available online or people might have access to it. So it's, it's good to have that conversation with the students as well. And so, so this is what I do, and to answer Scott, your question uh, just a few minutes ago, I add these sort of warnings in the assignment. Um, so below grading, I normally have, when I design assignments, I have um, the learning objective and the directions and the grading. And below the grading, I have this uh, demonstrate integrity in your classwork, and so for whichever assignment I said, do not use ChatGPT, Google Bard, or any generative AI to complete this task. I will not accept work completed by uh, GAI answering the note-taking part of the task. Yes, I can tell, and students always look at me, can you tell? And I said, yeah, show me one. And then I always hope that you can <laughs> as well. <laughs> and, um, and I tell them that I, you know, I started um, experimenting with ChatGPT and these other tools as soon as they, uh, they came out and they received uh, the upgrade. And so I, I know what they can do. And I, I, and I think that it's also once, once they see that they trust you, that you can tell, that's when they kind of slow down with the abuse part. So it's, it's right. enough for you. Know, Christina, yes. I, I'm, I'm a little confused in terms of, you seem supportive of using it, but uh, that paragraph on the second panel, do not use chat, GPT, Google part, or any gen of AI as shortcuts. So are you saying it is okay to use? So for, and I should have, I guess, included the entire assignment, but for these two assignments, the task was to take uh, notes on the chapters, and I didn't want students okay. to simply tell ChatGPT, this is my chapter, summarize, find the Got keyword. Law. So that I told them that if okay. they type, yeah, so if they type, they can use um, WordTune Quillbot to fix their sentences, but they cannot ask. Uh, Chat GPT to do the note taking for them, so that's not okay. But they can improve their note using um, the tools. Um, and I tell them that I know note taking is boring, and I know it takes time, and sometimes they have to type so much. So I encourage them to use uh, Google Docs for voice typing because it just makes everything so much um, easier. They can actually sit back and 
uh, if they have a book or if they have a text and they are looking at it on, on their phone, um, they can just simply type their own note. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. And we have a question in the room. Yes. So I have a question. I'm thinking that you've been the classrooms already a bit. So um, my question comes from, I'm uh, thinking about equity here. Have you noticed that the work submitted by students that are using assisted, uh, AI assistance to be at par, better, worse than those who are using it? What, what, I guess my question is, are, as a, so with the acknowledgement of AI being used with the credit uh, and both part of academic integrity, is that work superior to the students typically who are not using AI? I wouldn't say superior. Um, with my students, with my international students, I can tell the difference. Um, and sometimes that's when I'm a little bit disappointed, like why didn't she use some of these tools like Origin or Quillbot when I ask them to use Canva to create an infographic. Uh, we talk about, let's say, the stages of culture shock, design a leaflet for, I don't know, uh, international students and just prepare them for um, uh, for culture shock and just write about it. And so I will have students who will use these tools. And when I say tools, were to incorporate or grammarly go to fix their sentences. And I will I will have students who just still don't want to. And I wouldn't say that one work is superior than the other because then perhaps those who who use these tools, maybe the images that they use aren't that great, or the organization isn't that great. Um, so I don't see a huge difference, but normally when I ask students to use the tools, I encourage all of them to um, to, to use them. Okay, the reason why I ask is because uh, if you're able to know the difference or not, the ones who are not using it then might be the disadvantage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and then I wonder how meaningful is the option given the choice to use it or not? Because if they are choosing not to use it because they want to, let's say, whatever, they challenge themselves, they don't want to use their, uh, have their data being harvested, for whatever reason that they choose, then I, I, I worry about how equitable that might be in the classroom and how to balance out the opportunities of using AI to um, uh, assist and, and, and help with work. But what happens then when, on the other side, if there's people who choose not to? So I'm, I'm very, I'm a little bit, I'm react for our concerns. I'm concerned about the meaningfulness of the choice of students to engage or not engage with mm -hmm. schools. Right, and I think that that's, um, you know, that's a great question, and um, I'm sure that people are already in the middle of, you know, researching this and, yeah, <laughs> and experimenting. Yes, yes. But I personally haven't seen a huge difference between student work, and and I think the reason why I haven't seen a diff uh, a big difference is because it's still, uh, you know, we're still just starting using these tools. I would say that in probably a year or two you could easily tell the difference between those who even left, you know, K through 12 working on these skills and those who came from K through 12 where these tools were banned or it was, you know, paper and pencil. I think you will be able to see the difference, yes. But right now, I don't see, a, you know, a huge difference. And I can still tell that the students are still experimenting with it too or you know, with it, with, with them, right? And I feel like you can't make these blanket pronouncements because it depends on the assignment. That's what I just learned from your presentation is that in a way we have to think about the use of these tools, not in global, but almost assignment by assignment, task mm -hmm. by task. It really, it really depends. Right, right. Uh, for, some, uh, for some assignments, as you can see, I encourage students to use um, YouTube summarizers as well. So they are tools that summarize YouTube videos. And when I started um, experimenting with these tools, once again, the headlines were, oh, AI can summarize YouTube videos so then the students don't have to. Not true, not true. Most of the tools will do a summary, but it's a very detailed summary. It's almost like it's a transcript. <laughs> so if a student wants to pretend like they, oh, they didn't watch the video, okay, then you read the transcript. Great, good for you. <laughs> so there's, you know, there won't be a big difference. And to be honest, some of these YouTube summarizers, um, there's an example that I'll show you with the recap. 
Um, it not only sort of you know transcribes the video itself, but it highlights the main points and then asks uh, questions as well. And students can click on and learn more and more and more. And it highlights, um, you know, some of these YouTube summarizers will um, um, find quotations, you know, sentences that are sort of quote worthy sentences, something that was really powerful from the speakers. And so I think that these tools actually promote uh, comprehension mm -hmm. as opposed to offering shortcuts. So I was very happy to see that. Um, but I will, you know, I will be able to show you some examples as well. As well. Yes. Before you move on, there was a question in the chat and I just wanted to make sure. Um, it says, what are some of the most creative approaches to using AI in the classes that we know or have heard about? Um, the example they gave was asking students to critique an AI just when they that thing. Yes, and that's something that I've heard before. I've, I, I haven't done it. Let me show you what I have done and then see if that's something that, you know, might resonate with you. Um, so, for example, this one, I asked um, the students to, um, and this was just this week, by the way, I just corrected their <laughs> submission and I, I was very happy to see the, the results. Um, so we're talking about social media and social media's impact on mental health. And every student has to read uh, an article or watch a video. And so it's, it's a different text for each student. Uh, but even if it was the same text, it doesn't matter. So I created that prompt, start a conversation with me about the article called by the author published. And so they have to fill in the, um, uh, the gaps. And I said, I'm an English language learner because these are um, students in the ESL program. Um, but if you don't want that, you can say, I'm a graduate student taking a 600 level course. So you can actually prompt um, ChatGPT, uh, letting it know what level um, it can go when it comes to asking you questions. <laughs> And, uh, and I said that we're practicing critical thinking skills and reading comprehension. And so students had to copy this prompt and then copy the media article or the transcribed video. And um, the response was really, really good. Um, Basically, ChatGPT was having a nice conversation, just like a tutor would. Okay, so what was the main idea? <laughs> um, you know, cite some sentences to support this point. Can you show me some evidence from the article to prove that social media has a harmful impact on? And so if the questions are too complicated, I told the students to say, simplify the question. And it did, it apologized, oh, sorry, here's the simplified version. And, and so students had this back and forth conversation. Um, they found it really insightful and they liked how it, um, so it wasn't asking the same question every single person. It followed what they wanted to know. Um, now I told Chad GPT not to give out answers the first time when I didn't do that, then students simply asked, so what do you think? And said, here's the response. I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. And, but once you say, don't give out answers, I'm not going to give out any answers. It's going to continue asking those questions and getting the information out of the students. And what I do, um, as you can see it at the bottom of the screen, I ask the students to copy the chat link. So they have the conversation with Chad GPT. Um, for example, here's the um, I just pulled up a, a link. And then here is with the shared chat. Then the students will copy the link and they will submit that with the assignment. And so I can take a look at everyone's conversation. And it probably is going to take them at least an hour to have a nice back and forth, especially because they have uh, the article um, or the video with them. So they, they will need to slow down and find information. 
So this is one, um, one way. Um, another one was students were preparing an Ignite Talk style presentation and we asked ChatGPT to help them to think about the details. So if they have to uh, complete a project, then they can just tell ChatGPT, I am working on this project and I need help with the set. Um, now, of course, you can give the detailed instruction to the student, have a title, make sure that you have this, make sure that you have that, you know, just all the details. Um, or you can create a prompt that includes that information and basically ChatGPT will keep the student organized and help the students stay focused. Now show me your title. Now what do you have? Do you have enough courses? <laughs> Did you think about this? So it's almost like it's, it's going um, through a checklist together with the students. Um, I have another one. And let me just go back to the full screen. So here my students were writing a paragraph together with ChatGPT and they had to cite information from the source. And so first ChatGPT asked them, okay, so write about the topic, just sort of free writing. And then, okay, now let's turn it into a paragraph. And I also need you to cite information from the source there. And ChatGPT kept asking the students, Okay, well, because I said two to three pieces of information. Okay, another one. How about another one? How about another one? Um, and I had to add the second part <laughs> uh, because I forgot to tell ChatGPT the first time that it should also critique the sentence structure and the grammar. And so I had a few paragraphs that were very nicely written, but they were full of grammatical errors. And I thought, what the heck happened here? And then I went back to my prompt and I realized, <laughs> I forgot to say that let's focus on the grammar. And and it, and Chad GPT did not write it for the students. It just stayed um, as what it should have been, a tutor. And when the students rewrote the paragraph and um, and reply to ChatGPT, here's the, up, um, the updated paragraph, then ChatGPT said, well, you know, you still have this and this and this and this missing. And I told the student that if you think that ChatGPT applauds you too quickly and too easily, then ask questions. Well, what do you think about the grammar? What do you think about coherence? What do you think about unity in the paragraph? And then as soon as they kept prompting it, it would say, well, yeah, I guess you could, you could add a little bit of this and this to your paragraph. So it's very, very helpful. So that's when you, know, you can use Chad GPT as a, as a built-in tutor. If students feel much better seeing an actual tutor in person, then that's great. If they want to see you in your office because they want to talk to the professor, then that's even better. But if a student doesn't want to do that, they want to work with AI, I would give them that option as well. And when we did this, everyone in the class had to do it. Um, so these are, if you're on the slide, these are some prompts that I used and then I can just show you um, what the students were submitting as well. Um, oh. So the students had to analyze three texts about stereotyping prejudice and discrimination for a course. And so once they copied the full prompt in there, then this is what the students will see next. So ChatGPT will introduce itself and then will say, okay, here's my first question. And the students will answer and it's going to be a back and forth, back and forth until they finish. Um, 
if I see that the students are not really answering the questions, then I just tell the students, okay, so it's, it's still a zero, do it again, and then open a new chat, do the whole conversation, and I tell them what was missing, and then show me, um, you know, show me your work. And normally they do this chat before we have a roundtable discussion in class. So they kind of do a, um, a nice preparation before the discussion. And so this is one example from a student. So there's Chad GPT's question. There's the answer, question, answer. And so it's the back and forth, back and forth. Um, and the way ChatGPT uh, handles this, you know, Q and A session is um, once the student responds, sends in the response, then it will sum up that response, will comment on it, and then ask the next the next question. So it's you know it's pretty thorough when it comes to that. Um, and here's another one. We talked about information literacy, and we were investigating conspiracy theories. And uh, and so this was, you know, my prompt that they had to that they had to copy. Um, I'm showing you that I normally start, like I pretend like I'm a student, and I will start answering. The questions because I wouldn't know where it goes. So if you decide to use ChatGPT for such, you might want to try. Yes, go ahead. Oh, uh, thank you. So I was curious, and you might have just answered this, but with that kind of um, question and answer bot, would we? Would I'm wondering if we inserted kind of the syllabus into that, if students could then kind of ask questions to that shared chat and answer questions around a syllabus or where it's like, what are we learning on this week or, um, you know, things like that. Are you asking if these tasks are in the syllabus? Uh, if you could almost kind of upload the syllabus as a piece of information. And then instead of say, you know, students asking the TA something that in theory they should be able to find in the syllabus, they're able to ask, you know, uh, a AI toolbot to see if, you know, that could just free up some time so from the TA. Okay. Cool idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Somebody write uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write it down. I'm going to be in touch after with figuring because I, I kind of wanted to see what that uh, shared chat and, and how to make that shared chat. I've never seen that before. Yeah. Yeah, but I think that's, you know, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and because sometimes ChatGPT can ask, you know, sort of you really complex questions. I always tell students to say, oh, slow down, ask me one at a time, just, you know, anything. And I tell them that they are in the driver's seat, so they should be the one in charge, not ChatGPT. And, but yeah, I, I use um, ChatGPT, or I've used it um, in a way so students have to synthesize information. Uh, information synthesis is very, very difficult for a lot of students. And it does a good job, you know, talking um, the student through the steps. So that's, you know, that's something to um, to do. And so in um, in these cases, what happened was, you know, students were practicing, or what happens is that students are practicing what it means to be um, autonomous learners. And my hope is that after midterm, I can start training students how to how to write their own prompt. And of course, you know, they will have to share each time what they do. Um, so they're not going to keep it <laughs> as a secret. But if they do a good job prompting, we want to know what it is that they've done. 
Um, let me just show you this one um, example of a YouTube summarizer. It's called Recap. And the reason why I encourage students to use um, Recap or any YouTube summarizer basically um, is because this video was incredibly long and, and I knew almost two hours. Um, and I knew that some students just wouldn't have revisited it before in a second and third time. Uh, but as you can see, so this is the amount of information a summary does. So it's not going to give the student a five sentence summary or whatever we used to fear that these, these tools would do. And especially if you're afraid that they might choose a tool that gives them an incredibly short summary, then you can just say, I want you to use this tool. And, and you can even ask them, you know, give me the link of how it summed up um, the video. So that's something that you can do. Just to prove that none of these do a very simplified summary. Um, here's another tool that I use and again, the summary is not just a brief summary. And it picks out some really nice quotation information that, that the students um, can use. So that's, you know, that's something to, uh, to keep in mind. Uh, I belong to this organization. I'm a member of ISTE. And one of the teachers um, wrote an article about how he uh, allowed students to experiment with ChatGPT in um, K through 12. I want to say it was in high school. And, and he said, yeah, some, some students completely abuse it. And, you know, he learned from, <laughs> from that, um, that you need clear rules about how students should be um, allowed to, um, to use the tool. Mm. But, um, but he also said that uh, those students who, and I guess, you know, this is when we can talk about equity as well um, from this different angle. If students decide that they just want to take shortcuts, then there, there won't be any learning. But if they want to use AI to enhance their learning experience, they can go very, very far and they can excel. And that was the conclusion of um, this teacher. I think he was a science teacher and um, he asked students to use ChatGPT to prepare for a test. And, and so those who didn't take it seriously, of course, failed the test. <laughs> and, and those who, um, who used uh, ChatGPT to go over the test preparation questions, ask for follow-up, more information, more examples, they aced it. So, you know, it has to be motivation coming from students as well. That is a really good point about bifurcation that uh, the person who asked mentioned earlier, kind of like that you have a digital divide or some sort of divide um, that what you might be seeing is uh, those who already know their craft, you know, they're going to take this to the next level. And I see that teach grad students and they have to do policy analyses. And I'm seeing the, the contours of that, where those who are already really good at this, they can really now take flight, you know? Mm -hmm. Those who are not actually proficient in asking the right questions in the first place, they have no reasonable access to making this work in a meaningful way and end up struggling or just plugging stuff in. Uh, and, and then it just gives them gibberish. It's not the right word, but but, but something that just doesn't, that really curtails their creativity. Right. They shouldn't right. be using it. Unless, who do better? They'd be better off not using it. And, and so it creates that, I feel like, bifurcation that mm -hmm. we are all concerned about. Yes, and, and I, I would say that if people are concerned about that, and rightfully so, they are, um, the solution is take the time in class and, mm -hmm. uh, and talk about it. And just ask students to, you know, do some take home and bring it back to class, and let's let's talk about it. How did it work for you? 
you know, what were the challenges? And that's what I did with my student. So the reason why you can see the two videos because I actually asked permission to show <laughs> the clip. And, but I didn't ask permission because it was last year and I couldn't um, reach back to my former students. So I just used um, a little image to cover their faces. But so I asked, you know, if you just remember back uh, at the beginning of the presentation about the flow, I keep asking the students. So what did you think? What was easy, what was challenging? And so in that vlog, here, this is when students um, talked about what was easy and what was challenging. And so I kept tweaking my instructions as well. Okay, so something was confusing, something didn't make sense or something they misunderstood. Okay, how, how can I make it? Um, so let me just play this video here. Hey guys, so this is my little vlog on using ChatGBT for our assignment. So this was only my second time using ChatGBT. I always thought you would use things like ChatGBT or other artificial intelligences to cheat and not to enhance your learning. So it was pretty cool to use it. The AI driven tutorial had me think more critically, whereas if I didn't use it, I wouldn't be thinking as deep as I did. When I inserted my prompt into the chat, it, ha it asked me to cite my references, so it made me do research and cite everything that I learned from. I learned way more about my topic when using Ch chat GBT and inserting a prompt. I was doing my research on the 9-11 attacks and the conspiracy theories that were attached to the attacks. The questions that the AI was asking me it helped lead me down the right path to enhance my knowledge. Some of my most important takeaways was making sure whatever you're typing into the chat, you're phrasing it correctly. The prompt we used was super specific and it told the chat what to do and it helped uh, us learn more about our topic and it helped us do our research the right way. And whatever answer I put into chat. So you can watch the video because it's, <laughs> it's on the slide and you can just click on it. And I didn't pay for her to sell ChatGPT and be enthusiastic about it. But students like the idea how, especially investigating, to investigate the conspiracy, conspiracy theory of their choice, they, they um, you know, as, as they were interacting with ChatGPT, it kept prompting them and asking questions. Um, for instance, you know, she said it asked me to cite my sources. And the good thing about that is because I asked students to look for um, the origin of conspiracy theories and of course sites that promote it and then information that sort of refutes those conspiracy theories. And so Chad GPT would tell them like, well, you know, this source is whatever magazine, I'm not so sure if this is a credible source. So then it had that conversation with the student as well. And, and of course, as soon as the students uh, found the scholarly article, then Chad GPT was like, bravo, yeah, that's exactly what you should be using. So it was very encouraging when it comes to, you know, using something scholarly. And, and I, you know, I like that. And just briefly, because I know that we're running uh, out of time. So when it comes to us teachers, I also find Chad GPT incredibly um, helpful. Um, so, for example, when um, when I wanted students just to um, to have a conversation about a certain topic, I I asked ChatGPT to give me um, give me some questions, and so I gave it the article, and then I said, okay, give me questions that target critical thinking skills, and then it. You know, it gave me a bunch of questions uh, on a different time when I asked for something similar, give me questions that target critical thinking skills. It gave, it gave me different categories. Here are these six categories and within each category, three questions, <laughs> but it was really, really good. And of course, you're not going to be able to use everything. Some of those sort of overlap as well, but it's good to even help me out a little bit. Because me coming up with all these questions <laughs> probably would have taken a few days. But this, you know, this was much faster. So I felt that it helped me with efficiency as well. 
And on another occasion, uh, my colleagues and I were working on um, the student learning objective or the ELTA program. And so this is what we put together. Uh, basically, you know, we kept thinking, okay, for this level, we're talking about the graduate academic writing. We want students to be able to do this, and this, and this, and this. And so we had like a shopping list of what we want students to be able to do by the end of the semester. And what I did, I copied and put it in ChatGPT, and I said, okay, I need you to sort it out to skills, knowledge, and attitude. And it did. And then I said, okay, you know, now make it, you know, rephrase it so then my students will understand because some of the sentences were written in a way that a language learner would not necessarily understand. And if, it, if I put it on the syllabus, I want the students to understand what they are reading. And so it helped with that as well. Um, I had to tweak it a little bit further because once again, um, every now and then it repeated the same sentence within skills and knowledge or some of the sentences overlapped, you know, some of the items overlapped. But again, it saved me hours and hours of work. So just, you know, a couple of ideas of what it can do. Um, Ever since I started using um, AI-powered tools, I had to update my syllabus. I had to um, revamp a lot of my assignments. Uh, I started adding these disclaimers to my tasks, to my assignments, and but I'm asking for constant feedback from my students. And so that's, you know, that's definitely something to, to keep in mind, feedback from the students, because they will let you know. They, and they will be very, very honest, especially if you're telling them that you're still experimenting with it, you still don't know. I think that's when they're, they're going to be honest with you. And, and if they cheat, I just, right now, if, if they, and I don't even want to say the word cheat, if they just, you know, try to take those shortcuts, I just tell them, okay, it's still a zero. <laughs> and once you understand that, you know, I want you to, these are the learning objectives, and this is why I, I want you to not use something or to use something properly the way I'm asking you to. And each time the student will do it again, resubmit it, and I, I don't penalize them. So I, I know that that's, you know, we're still learning. I'm still learning. And I think that they, you know, they appreciate that. Um, here on this slide, I'm giving you some information. Um, I follow, if you have Instagram, if you have an Instagram account, um, I like, recommend uh, this site, Pedagogic Cloud. Um, they have fun infographics that sum up things that you can do with ChatGPT. And, um, and it's easy to, to follow. So whatever they do is just one photo, two, three, and, and, the, info, and the infographics are fun, so it's easy to, to understand. Um, another you know, part is staying up to date. And like I said, I, you know, I, I read a lot of articles, I, I watch videos. If you have colleagues who can, you know, you can send to each other information. Check this one out. Oh, have you he heard about this? Take a look at that. Then I think that that's, that's very helpful. So if you have people that you can rely on and help each other. Um, and so one final thing is um, I started using, so the students see one page in the syllabus about AI, AI tools, and I tell them, you have to wait for me to tell you when. And you have to look in the assignment and you have to see what I say about the assignment. Yes or no, or if so, then what and how. Um, and so they see it in the syllabus and I ask to complete the student responsibility understanding. And it's simply a Google form and you can copy it if you want to. Or let me know if you think I should change something for the next semester. But here, I just want students to, to acknowledge that they understand 
what I mean um, by using these tools, and they also promise that they will be honest about it. Um, and so it's right now that that's where I am with the tool. But like I said, experiments, experiments involve the students in the conversation. And once they know that they are part of this process, I think they they you know they will understand that these are tools that can help them enhance their learning and benefit from it. All right, so I know that we're out of time and I don't want to hold anyone off. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. I did share the slides with all of you. And so if, if you want to comment on any of the slides and ask questions, please send them my way. And that way I can just continue working on what you're worried about, what you're concerned about. Thank you so much, Christina. Uh, and just for everyone on Zoom, we posted the link also in the chat to the uh, feedback survey and also to registering for the coffee chats that we have lined up. And Christina will be at, at some of those as well. But this was great. Thank you.